Good day and welcome, my name is Mr. Bent, and today we are going to be walking through how to do a text portrait in Photopea. Photopea is our online free software that we're going to be using. It's kind of like an imitation of uh, Photoshop, and that's what we'll be using as we're going through this demonstration. So, what is a text portrait? Um, a text portrait is basically just an image that you have where half of the image is text, and half of the image is actually the image. I'm going to show you a couple examples here that I've already created. Um, this one being a image of Thor, and this one being an image of Vin Diesel. And you usually pick a quote that is of uh, many words, but they're short words. That way you can see as much of the face as possible. Um, if you have a whole bunch of long words, they don't end up being as big. So the goal for this, for having a text portrait, is many short words. Uh, so that way you can end up covering most of that face. So we're going to walk through this. We're going to walk through doing this with the Master Chief. Um, so I've inputted this image. I just went online and I found a high quality image of the Master Chief. I'll put this in the description below and I will put this in the assignment folder for those who are doing this. Um, so our first step we need to do is we need to create our portrait. Um, we need to create our landscape. We need to create the space that we're going to be doing this. Um, right now, the Master Chief's image is a little too big, so we're going to adjust that. So we're going to go over here to the Crop tool. You can also press the quick button C. That'll allow you to go there. It also kind of looks like some Minecraft DNA, and that's the button that you're going to click. Um, once you've clicked that, mine already has some preset numbers in this because I've done this a few times. Um, so 850 by 1100 is the numbers that you're going to insert. That'll be roughly about the same size as a sheet of paper. Um, normal sheet of paper is eight and a half by 11 inches. So that's why we're using this ratio. You'll click enter and you'll see that it now chops off the rest of that image. But we still have a little bit of that transparency background on the top and bottom. So we're gonna do that again, but we're gonna adjust the size a little bit. So we still end up keeping that same ratio. The only thing is we end up chopping out um, all those transparent bits, which is exactly what we want for this. And we wanna make sure that this image doesn't go blurry or distorted as we're kind of running through. Awesome. So we have our face. Yours should look something similar to mine at this point. If you've got a little bit more of the face showing, that's totally okay. Um, but the goal is to have something that is a straight on image of the face, not somebody with their face tilted on side to side. So our next step is we go down here to this new adjustment layer in the bottom corner of our screen. And you're gonna click on that and you're gonna go all the way up to color fill. Once you've selected color fill, we're gonna drag this all the way down to black. We're gonna set it as black for now. We can change this later if we need to, to suit the image. We're just gonna set this as black. Your image should go black and you should see a new layer being your color fill layer show up into your layers menu. And you're just gonna drag your image back to the top. Now we need to turn on our rulers and get our ruler uh, active. So in order to do that, you can see that my ruler is already here. Your ruler might not be. So in order to turn that on, you're gonna go down uh, into your view and you're gonna click on rulers. Um, that it can turn it on, turn it off, and you want to have it on. Uh, right now we're splitting the image, so that way we can get that perfect center line in the face. So we're going to go over and we're just going to click and drag from the ruler on the left side of the screen, and it'll kind of almost snap in the middle. Um, you'll see that it'll jump to the x-axis being 425 pixels. It'll kind of like almost hold it there for a little bit, kind of resist you. That's the middle point on the screen. So that's perfect. That's exactly where we want to have this. If your face is a little off center for whatever reason, you do want to end up splitting this as close to the center of the face as possible. So we've got our ruler in. We've got our face split. Next, we're going to grab our rectangle select tool. The quick button is M for this, but you can just click on this here. And we're going to highlight the right side of the Master Chief's face. And then we're gonna do Control C, which is copy, and Control V to paste, which creates a new layer. You can see in the right hand side here, we've got a new layer, and that is awesome. That's exactly what we wanna do. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna reselect the background layer because we still want to end up highlighting that. If we end up having layer one selected and we do the next step, it won't actually work and do what we need it to do. So we need to make sure that we are selecting the proper layer and the one that we want. And we're gonna highlight the left side of the Master Chief's face. So once we've selected that, we're gonna do a raster mask, which is gonna make the other side go black, um, which is gonna help us for making our text portrait look the way that it needs to. So you're just gonna click add a raster mask and you'll see that you end up getting this little bit with a chain to the right, um, half white, half black. And if I turn off that layer one, you'll see that that right side of the Master Chief's face is now black, lining up with the actual image here on the right side. Awesome. So we've got all that done. Now we're ready to throw in some text. Um, 
So you're going to click on this T tool down in the bottom corner and you're going to adjust your font color. It'll probably be defaulted to black and we're just going to set it to white for now. It's going to be the easiest to see if it's white. Really, the color doesn't matter at the end of the day, but we do need to be able to see it as we're typing. Um, you can select your font size, set it to max right now, which will be 150. And then you're just going to click enter and you're going to click somewhere on the page. Now, when you're typing, it's probably going to go off the page. It's going to be too long. It's going to be too wide. That's totally okay. We'll adjust that. Don't worry about that for right now. The biggest thing is getting it typed out so that way we can adjust it and figure out what sizes we need. So an awesome Master Chief quote, quote, wake me when you need me. An amazing Halo 3 and a Halo 3 quote. Um, so once you've got that all in, you might not like the font style that you've chosen. So it might look kind of crummy. Uh, might not suit the image very well. Um, so you'll double click on that and control A. So that way you can highlight all of the font. It should look something like mine. And then you can just go down here uh, in the very top, right next to the big T in the top row. And you can select any font you want. The goal for this is to have something that's bold. So the more bold, the better uh, this will look. Uh, in the end, if you have super fine font, super thin font, it's not going to look super great. So do your best to find a bold font that kind of suits the mood of the image. Um, I chose um, the Armalite um, rifle just because I thought that that suited the Master Chief image quite well. So we've got that in there. Your text might be really far apart. It might be really close together and we're going to adjust that. So if we click on this character tool, um, you'll get a drop down menu or a little menu that shows up to the side and we're going to go to leading. Leading adjusts the space in between the letters. Um, and we want to adjust that so the words are just away from touching each other. So I'm going to try, say, 110, and they're just away from touching each other, which is exactly what we want. If they're just touching each other, so if you did 105, that would also be a totally okay for this. That's 100% okay. Now, we don't want to show as much of the face as possible. So in order to do that, we're going to press con click on our words using the select tool. And then we're going to press the control button and hold it. So left control button, when you do that, you'll see these boxes show up around your image. That means we can stretch and manipulate this text. So we can drag this out and make this look like it's taking up more of the space, um, which will help us see more of the Master Chief behind our text, which will make this look a little bit better. Awesome. So you've got your text in, you've got your leading set up, you've got the text font that you want. Um, awesome. So now you're going to turn back on your layer one. You'll see that it should disappear. Your layers should be in the exact same order mine are. Layer one followed by text, followed by your background with the raster mask, then your color fill layer. You're going to select your layer one only, and then you're going to right click it. Once you right click it, you're going to go to clipping mask, and it's going to make it have some transparent bits with the text that's behind. And bam, we end up getting wake me when you need me. Um, showing through, seeing the Master Chief's face through that. Now, sometimes it doesn't look super great. As you can see, some of those areas of me doesn't look super amazing. Um, it doesn't on my screen. It might look like that on the recording. You can adjust that. You can change that color now, which is just the background color. And in order to do that, you just click on the color fill layer, the black side of the color fill layer, and you can select any color you want to make that red, pink, blue, whatever you want. Um, maybe you want it blue to match Cortana. Um, whatever you want, whatever you want to do, you can adjust those colors to maybe suit your image a little bit better. Maybe white allows you to see it definitely better, but you want to match the mood of that image, which usually the dark ends up suiting these a little bit better, but it's personal preference when you're going through. And that's how we end up doing that. Um, so now that you've got your text portrait all completed, it is all done. Awesome. Um, you can export this. There's a few ways to export this. You go to file and you can go to save as a PSD or export as. So when you save as a PSD, it creates a Photoshop file. And that means that you can just take that file later on in the future and just come in and plop it in here. It's kind of like saving your work. Um, since Photopea doesn't actually save your work as you're working, if your website crashes, you're going to have to restart. So uh, good food for thought is try and save as a PSD often. Um, replace your old file so that way if something happens you can just go and drag that PSD file plop it in you've got all your layers all the work that you've done it's basically saving it just as it is um, in Photoshop so that way you can continue on through Photopea um, if you export it as a PNG JPEG whatever um, 
and you plop that in here, it just ends up being like an image. You can't manipulate any of those layers. That's already too late. That's already done. Um, for me, when you are submitting this, for those who are watching this as my class, um, you are going to be submitting me a PNG and a PSD file for this assignment um, as you're walking through. And then when you do your own variation, you'll be doing that as well. So that way I have two copies so I can see all of your layers, I can see all of your work, and then I have the final PNG copy of this assignment. So if we want to remove this ruler, we're going to drag it out of our way so now we can see our work. And that is how we complete our text portrait. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day. Take care.